So most of you know Howard. Uh, Howard's been working on air pollution in the Hunt for about 30 years, particularly on uh, particles. Uh, he's worked with a lot of community groups and done a lot of really great you know, work as a university academic reaching out to help the community and he's uh, widely known and really well trusted. He's also the president of CASAMS, uh, so he's ideally suited to bring you up to date on how to find air quality data. Thanks. Thank you, Craig. My job today is to talk to you about where do we find sources of information associated with air pollution, uh, and in particular particles. I'm going to be going through a series of internet sites. I don't expect you to write them all down. I've asked that my talk be available on an appropriate website so that you can download it and use that to your own, as you wish to, in terms of, uh, in terms of your own needs. Um, it's been an interesting exercise for me because it helps me bring my concepts uh, of data sources together for myself as well. Um, so, uh, the focus is not going to be on the broad scale pollution picture, although most of these uh, sites will have something about the gases that Jeff has mentioned. I'm going to focus on particle matter, which is my own near to dear heart in terms of my own research, but also a great interest, of course, in the, in the lower and the upper hunter. And Jeff has already kindly introduced the breakdown in terms of fractions, and I'll be um, in terms of PM10, PM2.5, fine and coarse. So I will be talking about coarse and fine at times during my talk. Um, and so uh, that's now organized or set up. So I'm going to start at the top. Um, basically, my focus was to be the Hunter Valley and then uh, New South Wales. But I thought it would be best to start at the very top and look at probably one of the best websites for relationships between air quality and health, and that's the World Health Organization. And I do not doubt that this will be referred to in several times, uh, perhaps today and certainly tomorrow, in terms of the talks. So this is the basic uh, website. Um, and I consider the World Health Organization to be the international umbrella associated for information in terms of air pollutants and health themselves. So there's a wide range of information on this site. Uh, World Health Organization provides an important base for air quality standards, standards and decision making. Uh, in fact, many, many countries of the world use information from the World Health Organization to provide decision-making guidance for them to set their own health standards in terms of the different pollutants. There are lots of different things on there. There's fact sheets about air pollutants, what they are, what their potential health impacts are, and lots of information on air quality and health, as we might expect. And there's also technical information about both indoor and air, outdoor air quality. I don't think this workshops will talk about much about indoor air quality, but indoor air quality has become very, very important in terms of potential health of uh, people around the world. Uh, and of course, a whole range of publications. And this is the World Health Organization recommended guidelines for a particle matter for PM10, 20 micrograms per cubic meter annual mean, and 50 micrograms per cubic meter for 24 hours. And for PM2.5, 10 micrograms per cubic meter annual mean and 25 micrograms per cubic meter 24 hour mean. And countries would then use that information and set their own standards based, uh, at least in part, uh, to what the World Health Organization recommendations are. Now, um, I also have been asked to talk a little about, about national pollution inventories. And Jeff has mentioned or in passing some of these. Although the NPI's the National Pollution Inventory, the two ones I'm going to talk about, provide information about sources and emissions of pollutants, they do not talk about health impacts. So it's an important difference. Okay? So basically, the National Pollution Inventory, which is simple, www.npi.gov.au, the process was established well, several years ago now. It describes, the website describes what the NPI shows and how the system works, and there are annual reports. This is a self-reporting system for industry and other major sources of pollutants. 
There's a toolkit system available on the website that explains to interest, interested people how the data are reported and how the calculations are made to determine concentrations or, or overall particle or other loads, loads in the atmosphere. Lots of educational information about uh, air quality and you can search by location, industry, company or substance depending on what you want so it's quite user effective. So it provides, the thing about the website is, in the National Pollution Inventory is that it provides emissions estimates from sources. Um, does not provide atmospheric concentrations. Okay? But it gives you a broad scale picture of the relative difference in emissions from different sources in different areas. So if we just look at PM type 10 for Newcastle in 2011 and 12 as an example, the total emissions for that year are estimated to be 880,000 kilograms. Then you break that down into categories, and the next, the two top categories are solid fuel burning domestic, which is 220,000, and water transport support services, which used to be called harbor activities, I think, although it may have been redefined, as 220,000. Uh, both 220,000. So two most important sources of PM10 in the Newcastle Abodes. Then you work down to fertilizer and pesticides, motor vehicles, and ferrous metal sources in that order. For PM2.5, it's a little different. Now remember that PM2.5 PM is a subset of PM10. So the PM10 results include PM2.5, but PM2.5, the final part is by itself, it's about 8% of the total PM10 in terms of the NPI estimates, 72,000 kilograms. Uh, ferrous metals is first, 42,000, then meat and meat products, fertilizer and pesticide emissions, structural metal products, electricity, electricity generation. But the interesting thing is I can't find anything about solid fuel burning domestic in PM2.5. So I'm a little bit worried about what this information is telling us and whether PM2.5 is really as complete on the NPI as it should be. Um, now, on the Australian scale are also the National Environmental Pollution Measures and for the atmosphere, the NEPM National Environmental Protection Measures, sorry, is rel relevant to areas away from specific sources. These are the standards or guidelines that Australia uses at, uh, uh, compared to what the WHO suggests. So the standard for PM10, as probably almost all of you know, is 50 micrograms per cubic meter over 24 hour average. And that's allowed to be exceeded up to five times a year to take into account things like big natural source events like bushfires and big dust storms. Uh, now, the NEPM for PM2.5 is not a standard, it is still a guideline. I was assured on Friday when we went to Musselbrook to, uh, in terms of the release of the chemistry, particle chemistry uh, uh, study, that the NEPM will become, for PM2.5, will become a standard, quote, very soon, soon, but it's been a guideline for several years now. Uh, and it's 8 micrograms per cubic meter annual average, 25 micrograms per cubic meter for 24 hours. Um, so this is, as Jeff mentioned, this is sort of a, um, a benchmark or a level which some comparisons can be made in terms of overall concentrations in the atmosphere. But it's very important not to, to, to consider comparisons in any way in terms of indic indicative if you change the time scale. So if you see a concentration of one hour, that's 65 micrograms per cubic meter PM10. It doesn't relevant, it's not relevant because the N N uh, NEPM is not a one hour standard. The other thing is that NEPMs are mainly used for regional overall picture in terms of concentrations. They are not used because uh, a site, a measurement site is next to a major source. So the major source is part of the overall concentration, but it's a different approach when you're trying to measure specific emissions from a major source. At the state scale, 
There's the uh, Greater Metropolitan uh, Regional Inventory for the two well, latest version is 2008. This has just been released a few months ago. And again, Jeff mentioned this a little bit in terms of his results. So this is the New South Wales EPA equivalent of NPI. And uh, it, there's lots of facts and information on this website associated with air quality. Uh, the definitions of what the air pollutants are, both natural and anthropogenic. Um, I do encourage people to explore this website. Okay, it's very, very uh, well written for public information. Uh, so again, you have sources and emissions and estimates, details of calculation methodologies there, presented as a series, in this case, of technical reports, rather than the way that the NPI is presented, where you necessarily go into a particular location and get source structure. Um, the particle matter is mainly under the section of industry, although it's scattered through some of the other technical reports, but the important particle matter that perhaps is of 